Today's edition of the podcast is brought to you by Coach Me Plus. Coach Me Plus is the leader in athlete management software and a product that I've been lucky enough to be using for a little over a year now. Only rivaled by the impeccable customer service that Kevin and his staff provides, Coach Me Plus's ability to constantly be amoeba-like in their ability to mold and, and matriculate what you're trying to get across and bring together is, is absolutely fantastic. Their constant pursuit of better ways and better methods and, and innovations and progress to their own product is absolutely fantastic. Go over to CoachMePlus.com, check out what they got, guys. It's, uh, it's something that I guarantee you won't be disappointed with. Hello and welcome to the podcast. Guys, we have a stellar discussion today with Anatomy at 1220's owner, Mark Megna. Guys, Mark's a guy that I've known probably for about 15 years now, back to his time when he would come back and train with us at the University of Richmond uh, when he was playing with the CFL. And we get into some absolutely killer stuff in this talk. Mark's going to talk about how being an athlete and actually being a sub-average athlete early on basically laid the groundwork for him moving forward. We talk about how he fell in love with training and how coaches impacted his life. And then we get into things from leadership strategies and developing your staff and selecting your staff, things that we all have questions about that, that Mark gives some really fantastic insight on and a real different point of view. I can't thank Mark enough for being open, honest, and candid with us and, and spending the time with us today, guys. I, I hope you enjoyed the talk as much as I did. Let's get right to it. Thanks again for being on with us today, man. I'm psyched to be on. Let's do this. Oh. Coach DeMeo is a, a huge piece of my life, and I have a great deal of respect for him. And I could tell you stories all day, but this is his show. I'm going to let him do the questions, and honestly, thank you for having me on. Oh, well, stoked to get you on, because this is going to be an awesome perspective. Um, I, we were just talking a little bit, and I think that one way we can start this that would be awesome is to talk about your time as an athlete. Let's talk about what was important to you as an athlete and that got you into coaching to begin with. Uh, as an athlete, you want to start way back? You want to start in college? What do you think? What Perfect. do you suggest here? Okay, so way back, listen, uh, I'll give you the quick early story. I was I grew up in a place called Fall, Fall River, Massachusetts. I was raised by my mom, single parent. She raised my brother and I, and... I was a very out of shape kid, very insecure, low self esteem, um, and I wasn't good at sports. I was bullied a great deal, and uh, I hated being a young person. But you know, something happened to me when my grandfather asked me why I wasn't hanging out with the other kids, and I told him because you know they they really bully me and pick on me, and I hate it, and I and I feel uncomfortable. So. Without hearing too much after that, he took me to the local boys club. He trained me and um, put me through this workout. And he said, this is going to help you in your life. And I had no idea what he meant by that. But I started to train with him. And then he made me train every day. And then I started to enjoy the torture, if you will, of being trained. And I, and I, I started to make connections within myself. And I, some people say they find themselves doing certain crafts. I found myself in a weight room through like hard work and um, failing hundreds and hundreds of times at different exercises and coming back to the well and trying them again and then succeeding and I like that and I quickly started to change my body and then I realized that I'm going to have to put some of this into play so often there's so many guys out there who train like Tarzan but they perform like a child and I wanted to perform well because I realized that the athletes they had say you know, they got respect, and I wanted respect. So I went out for the high school football team, and I played three sports in high school. I played football, ice hockey, and baseball, and uh, I didn't play much, to be honest with you, as a freshman and sophomore. Uh, I was very average. I didn't know what I was doing. Um, but the one thing that remained constant was I continued to train, and then I continued to train more and harder than anyone else. Like when everyone was going out and they were drinking beers and partying and uh, stealing liquor from their parents, I was training. When they were rolling joints, I was training. Um, I just in, completely invested, immersed myself in 
training and getting better. You know, I didn't know anything. All I knew is like I had to feel really great when I when I would be running. I didn't want to be tired. I never wanted to be out of breath. I wanted to be strong. I wanted to be able to pick someone up and throw them like a rag doll. And that's how I trained. And I just old school ways with bodybuilding. And I started to really enjoy running around a football field. And it was an outlet for my frustration. All the kids that I could uh, take my frustrations out on, I, I kind of got you know, a chance back at them, so to speak. But that's what led me to sports. And, and I just love... You know, uh, I grew up in New England kids, so I loved the Red Sox. I loved the New England Patriots. I was obsessed. And I worshipped athletes. I really did. When I was a kid, I went to the doctor, and the doctor told my mother, my son's going to play for the... No, the doctor, Dr. Gene LaMare, told my mom, your son's going to play in the NFL. And my mother didn't even know what the NFL was. And he said, why do you say that? He said, because he has big bones. He's big. And he, he's going to be a strong boy. So, plant that seed... You know, my mother told me I could do anything. And I said, I was going to play in the NFL. I didn't even know what it meant, but I knew that all my family respected the Patriots. So I wanted to play in the NFL. So I went from there. Uh, in high school, of course, you remember Jim Reed. Oh, yeah. The story is that Jim Reed went to a high school football game, and uh, he was watching the game, and I was playing middle linebacker. And the year before that, I was playing defensive end. But he... I was told by my head coach that, who I love very much, my head coach was a great man. He said, if you play defensive end, they're going to run away from you, so you have to play middle linebacker. And I wanted to be a defensive end because I idolized Howie Long, Reggie White. He said, if you play inside, you can make a lot of plays. I, of course, I said, I'll do whatever you need me to do. Um, I ran the wrong way on one play. Coach Reed was at that game. He was in the stands. And it was a sweep to the left, and I ran right. And I fell down. I got a cut block on my legs. I got up. And I ran about 50 yards downfield, and I caught a kid from behind. And that's when Coach Reed, uh, you know, came to the locker room and he offered me a scholarship. And that was it. I I'd love to tell you I was recruited by every school in the country, but the truth is I only got one scholarship offer, and Coach Reed never even showed the head coach the uh, – because Coach Reed was the defensive coordinator at that time. I'd love to tell you that every uh, team wanted me, but he hid the game film from the head coach, and he said, this kid's really good, we want him. Because if he showed the game film to the coach, I probably wouldn't have gotten a scholarship. He really took a chance on me. And when I got there, he said, you have to outwork everyone. Just to, feel, just to fit in, you have to outwork everyone. And the rest is history. And the people that, the most important people, I'm actually working on a project. I never had a father. Okay, of course I have a father, but I didn't know my father. And every man in my life that contributed to my growth and my maturity and just understanding how to behave, how to act and how to act like a grown man came from a coach. I came from my high school coach. It came from the principal at my high school. It came from my Jim Reed, Joe Cullen, Jeff Hansen, uh, Mark Duffner, the linebacker coach of the Cincinnati Bengals, Bo Pelini, uh, Pepper Johnson, Bill Belichick, Bill Parcells, Pete Carroll, all, Dick LeBeau, all these guys were coaches of mine who weren't just brief moments in my life. They had a serious impact on my life and how to treat people. And that's what it all comes down to, as we know. Yeah, 100%. There's some, some fantastic names in that first part right there. It brings back memories of, of the old times back here when you guys were, were here at Richmond. Yeah. So then we fast forward after your time in the league and your time in the CFL and now you're coaching and now you're working as an entrepreneur. So how did that time as an athlete tie into coaching and entrepreneurship and how does that triangle really fit together as kind of a, a non-exclusive three prong attack? Well, you know, I, I find that the people the people that are most successful that I've been around, uh, one of my business partners, for example, he owns a professional sports team. And he's a team guy. He understands the concept of team very well. Excuse me. And he happens to own a professional baseball team. And he understands who to surround himself with. So... I think that, you know, we see all these things on Instagram, a leader does this, a leader doesn't do that. 
I learn from some really special people. I feel, Jay, like I have a, a Cliff Notes version that went on for almost three decades from coaches. And those coaches, as I said, my high school coach, Jim Reed. Jim Reed, when, when I got to Jim Reed, he had been a coach. He had been a coach for 35 years, you know, and so when he talked, no one else talked. You just shut your mouth and listen because there's a, re- there's a great reason he's doing whatever he's doing. You just need to trust him. And people like Joe Cullen, like, you know, I, I went to the, that Sornax event and we had a guest speaker. We had two guest speakers that were Navy SEALs. One spoke for like two hours. It was the most incredible speech I've ever heard in my life. Um, and he told us that, you know, when you start to have men that work under you, there's something special that happens. And you have a lot of responsibility. And I learned what that was like to kind of take orders and understand that you have to do the best you can with the circumstances you're dealt from great leaders. And one of those great leaders is like a man named Joe Cullen. And you, I mean, you, he puts you through hell, but he's putting you through hell because he knows that there's the biggest reward there. And... If you can get the people under you, the people on your team to understand what they're doing, why they're doing it, and what the end goal is, and you can get them as, uh, it's Brett Bartholomew, right? It says the buy-in. The buy-in is a lot harder than people think. I mean, everyone thinks they've cornered the market on genius, but to get people to believe in you and trust you, that's hard to do because that's your business. And any great business, as I learned from my business partner, and the people around me that are successful, they understand it's a team game. And it's really, really hard to get people who have never participated in team sports to understand that. And, you know, I wish I could tell you I, I could, you know, write the book on all those things, but I can't. Like, I'm, I'm honestly doing the best I can with very little. Um, this is my first time I'm owning a business. And today we were awarded the the best gym by the readers of Miami. They have uh, 2.5 million readers in the newspaper. And we were awarded the best gym, and that has nothing to do with me. That has to do with our team. You know, they they they're the people, just like a team, Jay. And when, when you work with your guys in basketball and every sport, the athletes that understand the most important person in the situation or the relationship is not you; it's the other person. You have winners. You have people that are going to take it to the next level. They're going to take the team to the next level. That's a certain understanding that most people will never have. The most important person is not you. It's the other person. And that goes for a business, a partnership, a relationship, a family, friends. And that's all the things that I carried over from sports to the business that I do now. No, that's that's fantastic. So now piggybacking after that. Because a lot of coaches out there are in situations where it's selecting staff or whether it's selecting players or people below them in the organization. A person is surrounding himself with such great people underneath him working in that type of facility. What are some things that you look for? What are some red flags? What are some some green lights that you really look for that pull you in even more to people? Uh, quickly, once again, I, I was at the Sornex event, and you're familiar with the name Gunnar Peterson? Yeah. I was speaking with Gunnar Peterson. Well, first of all, I, I, he doesn't know this. He'll know it now. But, you know, uh, I don't know him, but I know of him. And I know that there was a night, it was, the, it was Sunday morning, and I asked uh, Bert Soren, I said, hey, Bert, could I go in there and train early in the morning? And he said, Mark, i got to be honest with you. There's a big party the night before. I'm not sure who's going to be up the next morning. So I said, no problem, don't worry about it. I show up about an hour early, who's training Gunnar Peterson? And I said, man, I'm going to take this opportunity to go over and talk to him. So I talked to him for about an hour. And we get talking, and we, we had a lot of the similar uh, styles in regards to recruiting and hiring. One thing that I do, Jay, all the time is I'll do my interviews at 5 in the morning. So if someone wants to come in, I'll say, sure, you can meet me 5 a.m. Sunday morning. And if 5 a.m. doesn't work, I can certainly do 6 a.m., but I'm not doing 7, 8, or 9 a.m. Because I want to see if they hesitate, if they're not early risers. Like, that's our business. That's what we do. 
got to get up early, man. I'm sorry. You know, that, that's just the way it works. So if they're there early, that's great. So there was a kid who applied for a job at Anatomy. Um, that's the name of our business here. And I asked him to come in Sunday morning. He said, Mark, I'm in town. I'm staying at the Fountain Blue Hotel. I'm on a vacation with my family. I'd love to come in and speak to you about possible employment. I returned his email. I said, I'll meet you Sunday morning at 6 a.m. I'm inside training. I go outside to meet him at about 5.50. He's outside. He's all dressed up, clean cut. 5.50 a.m., he's there ready. I open the door. He walks in. He shakes my hand. He looks me in the eye. He says, good morning. My name is Edwin Santiago. Thank you for making time for me. To this day, everything about that, it sounds very brief, I asked him to come in early. He didn't hesitate. He said, I will be there. He was early. He was clean cut, uh, well-groomed. He shook my hand. He looked me in the eye, and he thanked me for making time. There was five or six things that happened right there that are all green lights, as opposed to another kid that showed up uh, through a very high net worth client that we have who referred him, showed up wearing sunglasses, he went into the interview wearing his sunglasses, and I had to had tell him to take his sunglasses off. And I knew it was over, but I was just trying to pass him information. I just I was going to let him talk. And he said, look, I'm really trying to build my brand. I'm going to be in Beverly Hills, New York, and I'll certainly consider, he was telling me he'd certainly consider making an ad in his home in Miami. So I felt really uncomfortable with that, and I said, I appreciate you coming in. It wasn't my job to rip him. I wasn't, I didn't really care because I knew I'd have no interaction with them. I said, I thank you for coming in. I wish you a lot of luck. And it ended there. And I think the skills, the people skills and, and the communication skills are present quite quickly. And we understand that. And that, if they have those things, it takes them to the next level. Like having the education, having the experience, those are all part of the course. You have to have those. But then I believe, Jay, it comes down to are you a world-class communicator? Because I preach to my entire team, to the front desk, to accounting, to head of sales, marketing. You have to be able to communicate effectively and efficiently to do well in this field. So if you're a trainer, it doesn't matter if you have a PhD in biomechanics. You have to be able to communicate and cue properly. How are you going to speak to someone? How are you going to instruct them? Are you paying attention to them? Are they? Do they look like they're going to cry when they walked in? Are they having a terrible day? Are they emotional? You have to be connected with them. And if you're not paying attention to detail, you're going to miss all those moments. And if you miss those moments and you're trying to apply force to that person's body, you're probably going to get hurt. Mm-hmm. So. Oh, yeah. No, and I love that, man. I, and that's a, that's a fantastic story. And all too often... Too many people are. Too many people in those situations are afraid to put the person in that situation. Right. And I think that that's something that, at least for me right now, is making me think. Like, yeah. at the very least, is like, we need to start doing that. Enough of saying, when can you meet me? Right. If this is that important, then you'll make it important. You know, Jay, I, I, I really believe that all the people that, if there was one small hiccup in that email link or chain, rather, it usually doesn't work out because they, mm -hmm. they're going to make it as seamless as possible. They're going to connect. They're going to get their butt in there, and they're going to let me know how bad they want this job. I said, look, I, another kid just came in from Philadelphia. I said, if you want this job, you should come in. You should fly in. You should spend a few days here. And then I'll certainly consider moving you to the top of the list. Because like you, I get, I'm in Miami, Florida, Miami Beach, Florida. I get a lot of resumes. There's hundreds of people who want to work here. I mean, there was two trainers that ambushed me in the parking lot in the last two months. And I, it's not like I don't want them to work here. I'm sure they're great trainers. But it takes more than just being a knowledgeable person to work here. You have to be a team person. This isn't a uh, independent training gym. What I mean by that is trainers don't come in here and just rip off sessions and then leave. You have responsibilities here. You have resp I don't care if you're 22 or 32 or 42. 
you have to clean the floor, you have to work the floor, you have to help others, you have to ask them, do you need anything? How can I help you? Uh, what are we doing today? There's participation. We have trainer meetings. Every trainer works on public speaking. Every trainer presents a PowerPoint about their life. Every trainer presents an uh, educational topic. And we do team training now, much like I learned from yourself and Jim Rudy. So, and that's the reason we do that is because of you guys. And we've only been doing it two days. People are setting PRs and they're loving it, man. Man, those old days with, with Tank running those workouts. Holy cow. That was fun. Oh, yeah. Well, fun's a word. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was something. Let's just say it was something. Yeah, yeah it was something. But no, I, and I think that's fascinating. So then tying it all back, you know, how you're bringing your staff together and doing these things, you know, being so team-oriented. But then there's also Mark. And, and I know Mark to be a very goal-oriented, driven guy who's also extremely education-oriented. And you brought up Sornex a couple times, so we know you're at the Summer of Strong, but you also do quite a bunch of other continuing education stuff for your staff there as well. So one of my goals with anatomy was to try to create a haven for education. So we do the Anatomy Way seminars. We bring in people like Onnit to Anatomy, uh, we're working on getting the FRC here. Uh, we have Mobility uh, 102, I think, or is it 201 for uh, the uh, Kelly Starnet program. Um, we, we, I really want, you know, five to six, maybe even seven different educational seminars at Anatomy every year. And all, all of our trainers will get it. And, you know, if we have other fitness people, we're not standoffish. We don't. We're not closed off to the rest of the fitness and wellness community. We want everyone to come here and learn. And that's what it should be because at the end of the day, we want to be really good at it. But if you get in this field, you want to, you've gotten into this field because you want to help people. If you want to help people, you get there by helping the people that work alongside of you every day and in the industry so we can better the world because that's the idea. Let's make this a healthy world, right? Oh, no doubt about it. And then again, it's continuing to come back to the same idea of communication, developing relationships, and continually improving yourself and those that you work with. Absolutely. Absolutely. It all stems back to what are you trying to create, what's your intention, and how are you going to get it done? How we get it done is tons of continuing education. We really feel like we've learned some things, but we have a long way to go. And to do a great job with our clients, take them to the next level, make, give them a better quality of life, we have to keep going. <laughs> Yeah, and which should be no different for anyone, whether you're working with clients one-on-one -on -one or you're running as a strength and conditioning coach at the highest level of athletics. It's right. just that is what our job is to do, is to take care of these people. And whether you're saying lifelong fitness or continuing a professional career into somebody's mid-30s, it's all the same thing. That's right. That's right. Absolutely. So then let's go back then a little more and... and tie it all back together with, with, with the last bit of it. For people who might not be athletes, are there ways that they can understand what this camaraderie is? Are there ways that people who haven't been involved in team sports can, can get this? Or do you feel that that's another make or break too for you as well? Um, you know, I, so you're talking about our members or the people who we're bringing into our staff? Your staff. You know, it's hard. I feel like the best, you know, and you, you're going to have the answer to this, but the best way to show people is to lead by example, obviously. And, you know, I've worked at facilities where if a coach screws up, they scream at him at the top of his lungs, what the F are you doing? You're an idiot. You don't know what the F you're doing. And I'm thinking, well, that's bad because you hired him, number one. Number two, you just... Uh, berated him in front of everyone, right? You ripped him a new one, and now everyone thinks that that person is incompetent. So they've lost all trust in him. You know, if someone screws up here, I'll pull him aside and say, you might want to think about this, and let's do this next time. Or give him the life lesson. Or give him the coaching lesson. I'm not here to, you know, I don't hire people to fire them. I, I hire them to try to improve them. 
if I don't feel like I can contribute something positive to what they're bringing in, walking in with, I'm not going to hire them. So I'll pull them aside and I'll explain to them, this is why I wouldn't do that. Or why did you make that choice with that exercise? If someone's under a squat bar and they're shaky as can be and they really can't set up their feet and they're, they're shaking and there's not a lot of weight in that bar and that guy is convinced he's a great squatter, I'm probably not going to start him off with squats or certainly not putting a bar on his back, right? Mm -hmm. I have to make positive choices and understand that this is a micro-progression game. So if I lead by example and I show my staff that this is what I do, this is why I would do it, but I don't think I have all the answers, Jay. I'm certainly in it. Now I'm going to ask my staff, what do you guys think? You know, someone really special taught me to listen. Listen to your people. Like, don't say anything. Just start off by listening, and then from there, you'll figure it out together. I want to hear their thoughts. I want them to participate. The way I get them to buy in is to be a part of it. I really want them to have a stake in the game. How do I have? How do I get them to have a stake in the game? I get them to contribute, and I value their opinion. I value their thoughts. I don't. This is not a dictatorship. You know, this may be. Um, I may be the owner, but. It's a democracy. We do it together. Really, I want to do it together. I'll tell you what. That is one hundred percent how I am handling our our team right now. Yeah. Is it's you know it's a lot of things that are set up where it's like almost like this is the pattern, and it's like so how do you think we should do this? Like what's best for you? And at first, some of the guys were like, huh? Like well, no, like. You hate back squatting. Yeah. But you're okay with front squatting. Oh, no, yeah, that's okay. So you're going to try harder if you do that because you're just, right? Yeah. Yeah, probably. So why don't we just do that? Oh. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. You know, it's like, are they different? Of course they're different. Are there going to be some adaptational differences? Of course there are. But am I going to beat my head against a rock to get an 18-year-old kid to put a bar on his back as opposed to the front of his shoulders if he's going to try harder and, and get what we want at the end of the day out of it, that he's going to get stronger, more stable, believe in himself more, you know, and, exactly. and now he knows you're invested in him. That's, I love it because that's, that's how we handle, like, that's how we're starting, well, we, me and people right. under me are starting to handle these kids and I think that when, when we were training together, 10, 15 years ago, if I would have said this, I probably would have lost my mind on myself. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. You know, I think that coaches so often get focused so into systems and numbers and, no, this is the program. It has to be like this. If it's not like this, there's a major problem. And you know what? Like, I have a serious – I have a hard time with that I, because the way I did things – if a coach would have asked me, hey, Mark, what are you better at? What are you going to be – what's going to make you more productive? How can you perform better? Oh, my God. It, I mean, it, it's such a huge – and by the way, you're building so much trust there. You know, hey, Coach DeMeo has empowered me to be a part of this thing. I don't want to let him down. That's a big deal, man. Mm -hmm. and people want to be a part of it. No one wants to be told what to do. No, don't get me wrong. There's certainly moments where coaches, you got to tell them what to do. Of course, I get that. But I want to make it, you know, an 80, 20 thing. 80% of the time, you're a part of this thing. 20% of the time, I'm saying, look, there's a financial thing here. We have to do it this way. I want to figure out another way to do it. But in the meantime, we're going to do it like this. They get it. Because you let them buy in 80% of the time, 20%, they're going to ride with you. That's the way it works. 100%. And I'll tell you, it took me 15 years here to figure that out. But I, I will say this, and knock on wood, since, since I've started to be more that way, like it's been a thousand times, not just better for them, but better for me. Right. It's just so much more fun because they're so much more enthusiastic and you don't have the stupid, come on, lower. Right. You know, because right. they just are like going... They're trying, but they're going through the motions with it. 
Right. And it's, right. yeah, it's amazing. So, I mean, yeah, I find that the people that work uh, on our team, you know, even with the programming, like I'm saying, oh, this is great. I'm going to program it out, uh, mostly traditional West Side system, and they're going to do exactly what I tell them to do. And then I caught myself and I said, no, we're all going to program it out, and we're going to start there. I'm going to do the first week, then uh, we have a guy named Eric Story, who's from Richmond, by the way. Awesome. He's doing he's doing the second week, and then they'll follow suit. Everyone's going to be a part of it. Everyone has a stake in the process because if you look at it on my end, now each person is invested. Now I can say on social media platforms, hey, uh, Eric Story is a part of this. He's He did the programming this week. And then next week we have a young lady, Jacqueline Case, and she's doing the programming this week. You give them a shout out. That's a big deal for them, man. You're crediting them. Mm-hmm. That's that's huge, man. When you mention someone, you give them credit. It's a big deal, man. You yeah. know. And that's that's. I think that's a fantastic spot to to end that because you know it's it's crazy looking at it how from the outside in as coaches, there's so many people that get so tunnel visioned at looking at it, it's just like this is our way and this is our world and these are these things, but you know when you look at it. From the athlete perspective, and then you know, bring in people that are entrepreneurs and and building things outside. There's so many commonalities and so many things we can learn from. Mark, I can't thank you enough for being so open and honest and sharing with us today, man. This is this is absolutely fantastic, dude. Please, it's it's an honor, man. Is uh, you know, I know obviously there's so much we could cover, but just uh, listen. I've known you for a long time, and I know you never ever ever to your own horn, but. This guy, Jay DeMeo, has worked his butt off, and uh, I, I saw him with GA status, right? Yeah, intern, yeah. Intern, and he not only went from intern, but he went from intern to coaching uh, a sport, to coaching several sports, to running every sport, to being the head of strength and conditioning, and being one of the top people in all of the sports science field. So, way to go, buddy. It's inspirational, and it's an honor to, to know you, and uh, have you as a friend, and uh have me as a resource because I need a lot of help. Oh, I appreciate it, Mark. It's, I need way more help than you would ever imagine, my friend, getting all these things moving forward. But, sure. yeah, dude, this is fantastic. I can't thank you enough for the time, buddy, and uh, we'll be in touch real soon. All good, man. Thank you. Have a positive night, my friend. Yeah, you too, brother. And a huge thank you again to Anatomy at 1220's Mark Magna for taking the time with us today, guys. Absolutely fantastic stuff. I mean, guys, Mark is a rock star who's who's been there from every level of athletics into fitness and now into entrepreneurship and looking at how this all ties together and works as one team is, is so fascinating to me. I can't thank him enough for being so open and honest with us, giving the examples about the interviews and things of that nature I think are worth their weight in gold. So Mark, thank you a billion times for coming on and sharing with us today. And guys, as always, if you did enjoy the talk, please share it through the social media outlet of your choice, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever it may be. Again, guys, we're just trying to get great information out to all the great coaches out there. So hit that like button, hit that share button. Let's make sure that people know that there's great information out there and that we can pass it on and pass it along to everyone else. And as always, guys, thank you for everything that you do for us here at Central Virginia Sport Performance. We will be back next week with another awesome guest. We will see you then.